In seconds on Studio 5. I want to wake up in a city that doesn't sleep. We're in New York City with a groundbreaking film. I am in America. My school really was the streets of New York City. And the director, who could take home a prize at this year's Academy Awards. Because it was very difficult to find the right approach to, to this film. Because I knew I only had one shot. And then... <laughs> the legendary choreography of Alvin Ailey lives on. In this young dancer, Gabriel Hyman. One of my first dance performances was Ailey, and I didn't dream in a million years that I'd be dancing a part of the second company. And meet the fashion designer who's dressing the NBA's Russell Westbrook in styles you can own too. The philosophy is basically, hey, we want to take old things and make them new again. David Osborne is in Studio 5, and it starts now. Hi there and welcome to Studio 5, coming to you this week from New York's Times Square. We've got a lot to get to, so let's get started with your top five from Studio 5 for the week. At number five. You gotta know who you're working with so that you can meet their needs. Super Bowl winning coach Rocky Seto leaves the Seahawks for a career in ministry. He's very passionate about God, and he's very passionate about football. The defensive passing game coordinator has been working with Pete Carroll since 2001. News of his sudden resignation came in this tweet. Jesus is the king of my life. He's the owner of my life. At number four. 60 Minutes gets a new correspondent. This I know for sure, that God can dream a bigger dream for you than you can ever dream for yourself. Oprah Winfrey joins CBS this fall as a special contributor to the news magazine. Winfrey is excited and proud to join forces. At number three, country music star Reba McIntyre. You gotta get down on your knees, believe, hold your hands and beg and plead. Gotta keep on praying. Releasing her first Christian music album this week, saying the timing was right after turning to God to cope with the end of her 26 year long marriage. I feel stronger, I feel happier, I feel like I've got a huge team around me with God and the Holy Spirit. At number two, we turn to hip hop artist Lecrae. Record label partnership, new music coming? Oh, uh, yes. So I'm excited. I've been in the studio working. You know, see what happens. Baby, I'm too busy counting all these blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Canada, Canada, Canada. Blessings is Lecrae's new single featuring Ty Dolla Sign. I got angels on the ground. I can need a paper. Blessings falling in. This song has been chosen for iHeartRadio's On The Verge program. At number one, The Dr. Oz Show. Miracles seem to happen to some people and not others. Well, see, I actually don't believe that. Takes a month-long look at the relationship between faith and health. What do you say to skeptics around this issue? Everything you call coincidence, make a list. I would argue that that's God's way of trying to get your attention. Oz teams up with Hollywood film exec and preacher Devon Franklin every Friday this month for what they call Faithful Fridays. The most valuable thing you've probably given in many ways is just the body and the soul that, that's inside of it. And those are your top five from Studio 5 for this week. We come to New York City to bring you a number of great stories. The first is a new film nominated for an Oscar in the Best Documentary category. It is from director Raul Peck. He takes the final written words of author James Baldwin and brings them to life with a little help from Samuel Jackson. The film is called, I Am Not Your Negro. There are days, this is one of them, when you wonder what your role is in this country and what your future is in it. Writer James Baldwin often called himself an eyewitness to the struggles of race in America, resisting being a part of the NAACP and even the church. Baldwin was always somebody that didn't 
want to be defined by any institution. And in particular, the church. He was a member of the church. He was a preacher at 14. So he knew the church and the contradiction of the church. And it's not so much the, you know, one particular church, but it's any institution. Film director Raul Peck brings the words of Baldwin back to life again on the big screen. The film is based on Baldwin's final manuscript, 30 pages long. It was called Remember This House. How do we go from Remember This House to I'm Not Your Negro? Well, what came first is the very idea to make a film uh, with Baldwin words, to put them at the disposal of a new generation. Uh, like I benefited from those words. Mm. These words make the man I am today. Uh, and, uh, and I kept those words all my life. You know, I read and reread and underlined every single Baldwin's book. The very idea was how do you bring that voice back in a time where we absolutely need him? Uh, and, and that was 10 years ago. And I got uh, uh, my hands on also on Remember This House, which actually were notes, not so much a finished manuscript. And, and this was, you know, within, you know, four years into the process, because it was very difficult to find the right approach to, to this film, because I knew I only had one shot. My dear Jay, I'll confess to you that I am writing the enclosed proposal in a somewhat divided frame of mind. The summer has scarcely begun. And I feel already that it's almost over. Reading Baldwin's words, actor Samuel L. Jackson. I am saying that a journey is called that because you cannot know what you will discover on the journey. Sam Jackson you is your narrator. Was he your first choice to do this film? Yes, I had a list of three, three um, very well-known actors. As, as far as I was concerned, I, I trusted the urgence. I trusted the intelligence of an audience. So uh, I was not ready to make any compromise about what the film should be. So when I had that list, uh, and Samuel Jackson was uh, the first name on that list. So he's the first I went to. And uh, his reaction was enthusiastic. And, and he said yes, you know, right away. I knew a blonde girl in the village a long time ago. And eventually, we never walked out of the house together. This film, all in Baldwin's words, looks at race in America through the life and deaths of three personal friends, murdered civil rights leaders, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King Jr. Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, three men who were totally different and who Baldwin find a way to put them together. And, uh, and this idea was alone an extraordinary uh, uh, starting point. You connect this Baldwin narrative from 1987 to what's happening in our country in 2017. How easy was it to make the connection? People say sometimes, well, he was prescient, he saw it. Well, what he, it's not that he saw it, but he saw the fundamentals. And as long as those fundamentals didn't change, Everything else is just, you know, set design. The future of the Negro in this country is precisely as bright or as dark as the future of the country. It is entirely up to the American people. Raul Peck has a number of great films to his credit, including La Mumba and Sometimes in April. Still ahead on Studio 5. A young dancer helping to keep the legacy of Alvin Ailey alive. It's a blessing that I'm able to dance and um, all these talents are um, from him and it's up to me to use.
Those are just a few scenes from Alvin Ailey's Revelations. Growing up here in the shadow of New York City, I fell in love with the Ailey Dance Company the moment I saw that piece perform oh so many years ago. So it's an honor to sit down with a member of the Ailey 2 Dance Company this week. His name is Gabriel Hyman, and he is this week's Studio 5 One to Watch. How big of a deal is it to you to be dancing with Ailey? A huge deal. <laughs> Alvin Ailey said, dance is for everybody. He believed it was for the people and should always be delivered back to the people. His dance company began opening doors for black dancers professionally in 1958 and it's a legacy that now includes Gabriel Hyman. I didn't dream in a million years that I'd be dancing a part of the second company um, and doing the rep that I saw um, on stage. So I think, it's, I think it's a huge honor to be part of Ailey. Take me back to the beginning. When did it all start? What happened to make you want to dance? There's an art school about walking distance from where we lived in Delaware. Um, and it, as an artist middle school, so we had to pick a talent. Um, and I was always dancing, apparently, when I was younger. So I, my mother said, well, why don't you just do a dance or something? So I went in and I just improv with some dance music. And then they were like, oh, we see potential in you. We'd love to have you come be a part of our program. And I was like, OK, great. What is it about dance that, that, that keeps you in it? Um, Originally, I loved dance just because I just like like moving to music. Um, but more recently, I realized that it's a greater form of, of expression. It's dance I feel most confident about and then I feel most liberated about. Um, and it just makes me really happy. I, I love to move. I love dancing. Did you have any heroes or mentors or people you looked up to and watched and thought? Because especially since there aren't African-American right. men aren't well represented. Did, was it when I first came across um, Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, I was just doing dance research while I was in high school. I came across Clifton Brown. Um, he's always been like my dance idol. A lot of people say that I either dance like him or that I remind him of him. So I was like, well, I have to look this person up because I have to see who this person is. And just the way he moved and the way he danced, I want to move like him. A young black man dancing as a kid growing up. Did you face bullying or teasing as a result of? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that I mean that was a norm just because people. He's a dancer. He's not doing you know that the the norms like he's not doing sports. He's not doing um, what every other male in middle school or high school is doing. I got to a point in my career and like just my life where like the teasing became less. Did a lot of dancing in church too before? I did. Yeah, we, it, I, I did a lot of dancing yeah. in church. So would you say dancing is a spiritual experience? Absolutely. Um, especially um, knowing that like all of my gifts come from God, I feel like it's always good to um, just remember that. Well, when I'm dancing in church, it, it's a great reminder that um, that um, it's a blessing that I'm able to dance and um, all these talents are. Um, from him and it's up to me to use these talents. Gabriel now lives in New York City and travels the world performing with Ailey too, but his hometown is Chesapeake, Virginia. Still ahead. The word Bacar means chosen or proven. The man and the fascinating story behind the fashion brand catching the eye of celebrities next on Studio 5. Those are just a few snapshots from the Bacar Collection. 
If you're not familiar with the fashion brand, New York City is the perfect place for us to introduce it to you and the designer, David Osborne. He counts among the people who wear his clothes, the NBA's Russell Westbrook. Well, David Osborne is not just a fashion designer. He is a minister, a husband, and a father. And he is this week's Faith Forward Fashion. Your line is called the Bacar Collection. Right. I'm saying that right? Yep, Bacar okay. Collection, yeah. What's that mean and what's the, sure. how did it happen? The word Bacar means chosen or mm -hmm. proven. And so the story behind it in 1 Samuel, there's a, a, a verse in there where he represents David was proven or tried. And so basically how it started for me when I was 17 years old, I rededicated my life to Jesus. And uh, when I came to faith, um, I heard something very clear. I remember I was vacuuming and I heard God speak to me and he said, hey, I want you to empty out your closet. After having this kind of dialogue with God, he basically is like, hey, you give me your closet and I'll give you a clothing line. And literally two weeks after that, um, I just started getting all these ideas and these design ideas. So I started writing them down uh, and, and started making them. Just a friend of mine, we just started making this stuff. And basically that's how the, the development of it started. You know, right now, vocationally, I'm a pastor. I'm a youth pastor at a church, have been for 14 years. And so for me, I didn't know how those things would come together, you know, being a fashion guy in a church, it just, I, I didn't know how it was gonna come together at all. So in 2013, uh, our church, we did a, a thing called Redefine, and it was a conference gathering culture makers and people that were shaping things. Mm -hmm. And so we had this conversation with the creative director for Kanye West and LeBron James manager and people that were doing really cool things in the culture but they had this kind of faith leaning and so after that having kind of like started that I said you know what I have to be credible to the conversation basically what happened is I said okay God let's go back to it and I pulled out the design references and started it and and you know it's been since February of 2015 that it's been official. Now in terms of, of your designs, tell me about how they come together. You take old and blend new, what happens? Yeah, so that's the, that's it, and it's this idea of the philosophy is basically, hey, we want to take old things and make them new again, mm -hmm. you know, and what that means. And so when I'm talking to a model from Brazil or I'm talking with a a fashion stylist from New York or any of these different places, I can have these subtle references to where my faith comes from mm -hmm. without it being um, disruptive in a, in a bad way. And obviously it's had a lot of appeal to um, some big names in entertainment and in sports. I'm seeing photographs of who's wearing Bacar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have no credit for this. This is just, like I said, it's a God thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I got a call from the stylist for uh, Russell Westbrook and Nas and they said hey we saw your stuff we love it um, we want to get it on our artists so I was like okay great so Russell had ordered some pieces and then just some really amazing people that are in the creative world it's just been unreal the places where the brand has gone and more specifically the conversations that it's lended mm. itself to I'm not saying that that there's been these massive decisions for Jesus because of a jacket, you know, mm -hmm. but what I am saying is um, I've been able to have some really interesting conversation with people that don't share the same faith or perspective that Absolutely. I do. Mm -hmm. And when they start wondering about, man, well, how do you do this and where does this come from? You know, I'll tell Complex Magazine or I'll tell anybody else like, yo, this is how it came to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's always opens like a door for like further discussion. You got a favorite piece that you've designed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I tell people about this. I say um, everything that, I, that we do is, um, is inspired. And so, for instance, this last collection, Collection 2, um, I called it Born for the Struggle, and it basically the references from my Jamaican heritage, I'm half Jamaican, half Mexican, and so my cultural reference from Jamaica is I've kind of hinged it on black, um, which, which is obviously one of the colors for the flag, which means strength, uh, green, which uh, symbolizes like flourishing, and then yellow, which symbolizes the creativity of the people. Today, this one is called the Strength by Strength Jacket, and so it's, it's the black on black which represents like this idea of um, strengthening each other by strengthening our people. And um, that's what I love about using, you know, fashion to kind of say something beyond you know, just, just a garment. And you can find the very latest additions to David's collection at BakarCollection.com. Up next on Studio 5.
a New York minister. Apparently, God can get glory in your broken life. The more scars you have, the more stories you have to tell. Whose words are catching the ears of the famous and not so famous? There are only a few moments left in this show, so let's take a look ahead to what we're working on for you next week. I have medical records that show that she shouldn't have survived. Her doctor says the same. The Dr. Oz Show takes a month-long look at how faith impacts health. And he's teaming up with popular preachers Samuel Rodriguez, Priscilla Shire, Devon Franklin, and Carl Lentz, challenging his millions of viewers to spend the next 30 days of their lives focusing on their blessings. What happens at the end of the Bless 30? What do you want to see happen? Uh, you know, what I want to see happen is that people go through this 30 days, they search for the blessings, they live in the blessings, they reorient their life to live in the blessings that are already there. And at the end of the 30, I want them to walk out with more peace, more confidence, more hope. And that's just one story from next week's rundown. As for today's show, I'm giving the final word to a popular New York pastor, Hillsong's Carl Lentz. We can be fruitful, faithful, passionate, effective Christians in every single season of our lives because Jesus comes with us throughout. But you cannot choose your season. But you can choose your spirit. Sometimes it's going to rain. Sometimes it's going to shine. My job is to have a spirit that says, Lord, no matter what's going on, I choose to serve you and I will be faithful throughout. Write this down. It might help you. Here's some good news. The most painful part of your process will also produce the most power in your life. Your pain will either be your prison or it will be your platform. It is your choice. Apparently, God can get glory in your broken life. The more scars you have, the more stories you have to tell. God surely does glorify a work in progress. That is a final word from the Word and the final word for this show. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye.